Let's see if we can uh, connect to Facebook now. Hope everybody's doing well. You're going to like today's lesson. And um, we are now, should be connecting to Facebook. Should be live on Facebook. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's uh, lesson. I usually broadcast this slightly later in the day, around 4.30, 4 have had to do with er um, having to do it early today because they're going to test the fire fire alarm system in my building and at uh, around five o'clock or so so uh, i'm having to do it early but again welcome to, to tonight's lesson you're gonna like it stick around i'm sammy abusad director of education at t3 live let's get started with my least favorite slide but i gotta share it with you which is the disclaimer to let you know that trading is risky and that whatever we discuss today is for educational purposes only got it so hopefully you said yes you got it i saw you say yes so you got it all right and today as i said we're going to talk about how to use tc2000 to find swing and long-term trades before i started the broadcast somebody in the room in the in the coaching room on the vtf asked if this will be applicable to other trading systems or will it be only exclusive to TC2000 because obviously not everybody uses TC2000 and the answer is yes it will be it will be applicable to everything basically there will be a small section that will be only applicable to TC2000 but even that part of the talk today you can uh, you know you can just change the parameters however you need to change them so that they're applicable to whatever system that you use i use tc2000 for scanning for long-term swing and long-term trades that's the software that i've used for oh i don't know over 10 years now would you believe over 10 years now and you know what the sweet thing about it is first it used to be called tell you the truth this long story short but it used to be called blocks and B-L-O-C-K-S and it got acquired by TC2000 and blocks used to be free but the good thing about TC2000 is that it costs only $30 a month to have uh, delayed data I don't need it for intraday trading I only need it for after the close so I have been paying $30 a month $29.99 for like 10 years so the good thing about it is they, they've never raised the price let's not speak too loudly otherwise they might hear us and, and raise the price okay so with that uh, out of the way let's get started now before I show you the program and TC 2000 unfortunately I have to tell you what I look for does that does that make sense before we actually go over the TC 2000 and how to use it how to set it up I have to show you what I actually scan for so in order to do that allow me please to talk about the only movement possible all right a lot of you in the room with me know this like you know your name right i do too but we have to you know we have to assume that we have new traders we have new members every single day so this is for them mostly so let's let's go over this real quick and and then we'll transition over to tc2000 first there's only one movement possible in the stock market i don't know if you knew that or not but it's true there's only one movement possible everything else is a subset it may look different but it's actually a part of that this movement this pattern that i'm going to sh share with you okay feel free to prove me wrong feel free to comment in the section in the comment section below the video whatever you want okay but this is this is what i believe and this is how i tr how I trade I base all my trading based on what I'm about to share with you the entire life of a stock and or the market is comprised of a cycle repeated time and time again this cycle forms the basis for one's ability to pre predict future price movements the cycle referred to as the atom or the basic unit helps the trader know the current status of the stock as well as the market and what's likely to occur next the key to trading successfully is important is knowing where where you are in the cycle 
And the key of trading successfully is knowing where you are, where the stock is in the cycle. This cycle is comprised of four distinct, uh, four distinct stages, which in turn are ruled by four distinct emo emotions. Excuse me. Let me show you what the cycle looks like. This is it. Very simple. You have basically stage one, which is ruled by ambivalence or indifference. It happens after big, long sell-offs where most traders get hurt and they lose interest in the stock. So a better word than ambivalence is indifference. People just couldn't care less about the stock. They're not interested in buying it. They're not interested in shorting it. And that's why it goes sideways in a really slow, steady, controlled base. Okay? That's stage one. Stage one transitions into stage two, which is the uptrend part of the cycle. And so it's the boom and bust, right? This is the boom part of the cycle. And it's dominated by greed, especially when we're at the top. You, you'll start to see things fly. And uh, does that kind of ring a bell or does it like, you know, remind you of current market environment? I'm not predicting we're topping out just yet, but I certainly am seeing things uh, take off like crazy after being up for a long, long time. That's indicative of euphoria, greed. Everybody starts thinking, this is the next Apple. This is the next Tesla. Let me get in it. Uh, before it goes to the moon, they, 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 they basically um, do away, away with the concept of risk and they start to just think about missing out, fearing missing out. And so they, everybody wants to be in the game at any cost, basically. Stage three is uncertainty. Stage three is sometimes only a pivot, like, or one bar, one month, one, you know, could be just a, a pivot, could also be a base. It depends. If it's a base, it's when you have uncertainty. We certainly had the potential to, uh, I mean, the market in October had the potential to be a stage three, but it broke out instead of down. So it ended up being basically a continuation base rather than a reversal base. And then from stage three, we go to stage four, which is dominated by fear. Most people lose money because they're, most people are trying to play, they try to play long and they try to pick the bottom and the stock just keeps, or the market just keeps going. And the cycle repeats. Once everybody's out, the stock basically goes climactic and then starts to, uh, people start to lose interest. The, the sellers are out, the buyers are not yet ready to buy it because they're, everybody, er, er, the price got decimated, everybody got hurt. So let me show you what it looks like on a real chart. This is what it looks like. You can see it on a one minute, two minute, five minute, any time, any and every time frame. But it's easiest to show it to you on a monthly chart because the monthly shows you the entire cycle, right? So ba basing here, stage one, stage one breaks out uh, and flies, goes from 10 bucks to 45, right? And then from there tops out and back down to where it came from and even more. Notice at the bottom, the small bars, very, very small bars. That's because again, people are not interested in it anymore. Same here, notice stage three was just one bar. Basically, that was the top. Sometimes it's more of a, you know, of a rounding top, especially if you look at it at smaller charts, like the daily chart. Sometimes it's really volatile where you think it's the top, but it goes back up. In this case, it went back up, retested almost, and then crashed, right? Notice the, the size of the move here we're talking about from 10 bucks to 150, 140, whatever, 150, easy from 10 to 150, back to 10, okay? That's what happens a lot. We, we see it all the time. I see it all the time. So now we're kind of up here and the market is just going. If we start to accelerate, we start to go vertical a little bit, right, like these charts are, right now the market hasn't accelerated much. If we start to accelerate, then we might see a top pretty soon, okay? All right, but sometimes you might say, well, you know, Apple was a whatever an eight dollar stock. It went to three hundred, and then when it dropped, it went back to. Oh, I mean, it went to seven hundred. Went back to three hundred fifty. It never went back all the way to five bucks or ten bucks. And you would be right. The really good successful companies over time they don't go all the way back. They have these higher lows and higher highs, which is why I call them the stocks that escape gravity. They don't come all the way back. And so eventually they always go up. It's also like the market for the most part, like the QQQ or the SPY. 
over time it always rises always but sometimes it can have really nasty sell-offs okay I mean the the Nasdaq we just talked about it yesterday in 2000 between like from the time we topped early 2000 to maybe early 2002 it dropped 84 percent that's the Nasdaq that's the the index um, but most of the time the market doesn't drop more than 30 percent so so again drops 30 percent and then goes back up drops 30 percent goes back up when we have a severe uh, sell-off like a depression almost or a, a real severe recession I don't know what what do they call these like we had in 2008 it can drop up to 50 percent but for the most part it doesn't really retrace a hundred percent like it did in when we had the tech bubble all right so we talked about this now in your opinion what areas on this chart do you think likely provide the best opportunities with the highest reward to risk what areas on this chart likely provide the best opportunities again if you're on social media feel free to comment if you're in the room here with me on the VTF feel free to type in I'm looking at uh, both so feel free to participate uh, stage two stage four above stage one okay that's a good guess above stage one so the breakout uh, stage two the, which is the uptrend stage four the downtrend that's a good guess too Ken because that's where the bulk of the move is made 100% all correct answers by the way uh, and below stage three perfect you guys are just amazing so here is all the strategies not really it's minus two strategies that I do as a swing trader there's two other strategies that are not listed on here do you know what they are by the way one is earnings and one is gaps so I, I use gaps for swing trading as well and one is earnings those are the only two things that are not listed on here that I also do okay now stage one you can actually short the top and buy the bottom you can I don't do that why because I don't I'm not trying to make peanuts here by shorting the top and buying the bottom the stock usually when it's in stage one or even stage three but especially when it's sta it's in stage one it doesn't move very much so I'm not gonna try to short it at 20 and cover it at 1950 as a swing trade as a day trade 50 cents I'll take it but uh, as a swing trade so I, I usually don't do stage one uh, short the top by the bottom I don't do stage three short the top by the bottom um, in fact when I do that I often get it wrong but what I try to do is this transition A when the stock is just transitioning so right here that breakout transition A breakout from stage one to stage two now when the stock is in a stage two it, it can last for years the market has been in a stage two uptrend on the monthly chart for 10 years so it doesn't go up in a vertical line it goes up and then bases and then breaks out or goes up pulls back a little bit and goes up so depending on how the market sets up or the stock then I, I can play the buy setup right here or the breakout it's called the pause that refreshes PTR and T3 buy setup MS stands for minor support you don't need to know all of this if you're if you if you don't know it but that's what it is I play either pullbacks or breakouts when the stock is in an uptrend likewise in a stage four downtrend I play breakdowns or sell setups counter rally and sell setups usually at the declining 20 by the way stage one stage three I ignore and then I play the transitions transition a which is the breakout doesn't always happen through a breakout sometimes it happens through a pullback but I play the breakout and then I mean I play transition a transition B is when the stock goes climactic so I play the top I look to play the top how about beyond today if you're in the room how about the the, the traders that played beyond or Tesla in the morning that's what it is it's tr it's climactic uh, transition B short but not necessarily we didn't play it off the daily off the intraday charts because it, it was a day trade so uh, so that's tr that's transition B transition C is exactly like a but to the downside so it's a breakdown and most of the time don't ask me why I really don't know why most of the time transition C happens through a a one two three pattern now what's a one two three pattern I should have probably dropped a link for it in the description but I didn't know I was going to talk about it it's I just covered it in last week's lesson so if you want to know what transition C what what 
what transition C, but also what the one, two, three pattern looks like, check out last Tuesday's lesson, okay? Posted on Facebook or and YouTube, and I, I dropped links for both my Facebook playlist and my YouTube playlist. So feel free to check it out there. And then transition D is the opposite of transition B. Instead of shorting the top, here we're trying to buy the bottom, okay? And I did a video on transition B and transition D a couple of weeks ago. I called it how, to, how the professional catches a falling knife. Because you don't want to be catching a falling knife unless you do it in a certain way. So I talked about that a couple of weeks ago also. Feel free again to check the link in the description for that. Now I just want to quickly, I don't want to spend too much time about this on this because it, it would take too much time. I mean this would take me at least an hour plus and we would never get to TC2000 if I spend too much time on this. But here's what transition A looks like. I can actually show you real charts, uh, but I don't have my platform up. Um, check out, for example, NLS. You'll see exactly what I mean as a, I mean, just a perfect transition A. NLS on the data chart recently. Bunch. Right now I'm in the Fitch. FTCH. FT, right now I'm in it. FTCH. Uh, strategic swing traders are in it. I just got an email today about it, how nice it was. It's a transition A play. And I'm not saying every transition A play works, but this is the picture. You, the 20, this, the blue line is the 20, the red is the 200. The blue line comes down to meet price, and price initially goes above it, below it, above it, below it, and finally gets halted. It can't go below it and it breaks out. So that's what transition A looks like. See it right here? If it's a long-term play, you can hold it. You don't have to get out of it. If it's a swing play, I like to use a bar by bar on the daily chart. So if it's just a swing, usually the ones that are below the 200 are swing. But usually, not always, that's not an, an absolute rule. So if it goes up a few days, I just go bar by bar and get out of it once it takes out the prior bars low. But sometimes it's a long-term play. It's not just a swing. So that's transition C. Notice how the 20, uh, this stock was coming from a stage four downtrend. The 20 was being crisscrossed by the by price. And look here, how it held, it captured price. It held it. It kept it from dropping. Call, use any words you want. I call it the halt, H-A-L-T. It halts the stock. And then that's when you know it's about ready to break out, when you get that rising 20 MA. So you play it long right here, stop right here. So that's transition A. Now sometimes transition A also sets up through a buy setup. Goes up and it gives you a buy setup at the rising 20. See that? So, but I don't think I'm gonna be going over that today because it would take too much time. So, okay, so that's transition A. So I look for that when I'm scanning on TC2000. That's the first pattern I look for. Then I look for transition B, stocks that are going climactic, like Tesla like beyond but beyond if you're not already in it it's late okay that are going climactic because when they top out they get decimated um something like this where do you get in if you wait for it to trigger on the daily chart like if you wait for it to take out the prior bars low on the daily chart you're gonna have a, a huge stop look at this six bucks because if you wait for it to trigger on the daily it means you're waiting for the prior bars low to get taken to get taken out so it'd be a huge stop. So I like to get in it during the day when it's at the open or if it runs up and get in it at the top, okay? Uh, so these are old plays that I played in the past. The entry was, for, for example, the entry on this was 22.23. The stop was at 22.48. 25 cents stop. It dropped 10 bucks. I covered it. It went to $1. Can you believe it? So U, UNX, U, uh, UXIN or something like this was the symbol of the of this stock. Covered it here for, I think, 12 bucks. And then it dropped, ended up going to zero or one buck or something like this. So those are that's transition B. Tr anyways, just transition B. Um, the blue line is the 20 MA, and it's a simple moving average. Most people use simple, and I want to see what most people are looking at before I pull the trigger, so I can read the price objectively. So if most people use simple rather than exponential moving averages, why not use simple so you can see what they're looking at? instead of using exponential because ultimately it's just a line on the chart it's only important because people react to it so in order for you to see where people uh, to pr to be able to predict where where traders are going to react to the moving average you want to know where, where where it is for them not for you does that make sense you want to know what they're looking at so that's why i use simple not exponential and ultimately i'm just a simple guy so i like to use simple i don't know about you exponential sounds exponentially difficult for me 
So I use simple moving averages. All right, transition C, I'm telling you, I don't know why. It happens through a one, two, three most of the time. Stock tops out, gaps down, gives you a one, two, three. In this case, it's a one, two, three, four. So one, so what's a one, two, three? It's an igniting bar, a resting bar, like so, a doji bar, and then a continuation. That's called a one, two, three. Again, a refer please to last week's, last Tuesday's lesson about the one, two, three play. A lot of people liked it. You will like it too if you didn't, if you didn't, if you haven't seen it already. Sometimes though, you get two resting bars, igniting bar, and then two narrow range bars. That's called the one, two, three, four, which is what we have here, one, two, three, four. But most of the time, transition C happens through a one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. I don't know why, but that's, that's how it happens. That's how it forms. So I look for that pattern. I, I don't know why my charts got stuck. This is one, two, three also. Anyways, charts are getting stuck. And transition D, using a climactic buy setup, CBS climactic buy setup, is the same as transition B, but we're looking long here. What was my best play, actually, this afternoon? What was it? Anybody in the room, from the room? What was the play from J&J? &J? What was the symbol? C-R-T-O. What was C-R-T-O? I should have my, I should open my platform so you can see. It was a climactic buy setup. As a day trade though, not as a swing trade. So I look for these to play swing on the daily chart, okay? I look for these accelerations. Look at this, volume, that, that capitulation. That climactic means capitulation. Everybody gets out as evidenced by that wide range red bar and the, the volume also, which tells me that there's no more selling. Time to buy it. When there's blood in the streets, go buy stocks or go long or whatever they say, right? That's what it means. When everybody's panicking out of the stock, usually it's time to buy. Okay, so we talked about, we're talking, why are we talking about this? We're talking about this because I want you to know what to scan for, right? If I just showed you TC2000 without telling you what I scan for, you're going to be really confused. So I scan, I showed you the four transitions, A, B, C, and D. Now, did I, have I spent an hour or two teaching you exactly how to do it and what to look for? each transition no I'm just giving you an overview in this case but the truth is it's not you know it's not like oh if you see a sell-off big sell-off buy it no you have to you have to know what the criteria is what the requirements are there's more to it but I'm just trying to give you an idea of what I look for so we talked about the four transitions what else do we should we talk about Ken you answered that question earlier what else is lucrative in that basic unit cycle what else is lucrative what other stages other than the transitions should we look to take advantage of anybody stage two and four so during in stage two and four as i said prices don't go up in a vertical line they go up they base and then they pull back sometimes so i play the breakout t3 breakout t3 pullback okay in a stage two uptrend so if it's a if it bases, then I play it long over the base, right? If it pulls back, then I play it long as a pullback. Notice these are all bases, base breakouts. Notice the shakeout right here, beautiful. Uh, base breakout, right, also. And let me get rid of this. Base breakout, this is also a transition. Notice the stock was in a downtrend under the 200 MA, declining 20 here, broke out, and then this is a transition breakout. It's like the NLS, the one that I talked about earlier. Breakout, breakout. Notice this was a pullback, but I didn't play it. It was tough. I thought it was tough. And no notice now the pullback. What a beauty. Pulling back to the rising 20, right? Pullbacks, pullbacks, pullbacks. Beautiful. Beautiful. This is ARWR. If you want to know the stock, it's ARWR, the symbol. Beautiful. It went to 70 bucks or 80 bucks. So I either play pullbacks or breakouts depending on how the stock sets up. That's it. And then there's also, there's a couple other strategies that I'm not going to cover, but well, here it is, unique play based on gaps. So gaps can be igniting or exhaustion gaps. So, so if it's an exhaustion gap, basically it happens after a sell-off and a gap down, and then you get a narrow range bar and you play it long, like that I did with the ANAT, a, a, a or a, I think ANAT, I think, A-N-A-T, is that the symbol? think that was the one. or a n a b a n a b maybe recently uh, I'll, I'll open i'll go ahead and open my platform i, I should have done it before i 
got on the mic. I think it was A N A B actually, not A N A T. So just give me one second. This is T C. This is the uh, uh, real tick, right? Actually, I can show you also. We'll, we'll take a look at them when we look at uh, when we look at uh, T C two thousand. But basically, the idea here is that stocks usually when they are down a lot and they gap down, that's a novice gap. When they're up a lot and they gap up, that's a novice gap up. You want to play it short. What's a novice gap up today from today's list? Beyond B Y N D. What was another novice gap up today from, from today's list? Tesla, short, both short even though they gapped up. The same with, with this, but I like big gaps to play long, right? Big gap down, long, big gap down, long. So uh, this is, I love these ga this strategy. It's not part of the cycle, so to speak. I mean, it is part of the cycle, but here we're picking it at the absolute bottom. And so uh, exhaustion gaps, and sometimes they can be igniting also, meaning if, they, if the stock breaks out, it's not down a lot, it just breaks out. So gaps over resistance and then breaks out. Gaps over resistance and you play the pullback in this case. Gaps over, so igniting. So this is another thing that I look for when I'm scanning. And then the other strategy is the earnings strategy. And actually we're starting earnings season, so I just started playing earnings again actively. Um, so and, the, and, and so basically I get in it before it reports earnings. The day before it reports and I'm in the gap. So I can capture the gap. So that's the idea behind the earnings play. And um, all right, okay, very good. So now that you know what I look for, but I'm not going to talk about earnings in this, in today's discussion. So okay, so um, uh, there's a section actually about it, which is you know about the earnings. But again, we're not going to have time to talk about it. If you want to watch a video about the earnings and how I do it, a good explanation for it. Really good explanation. Link is in the description about how to play earnings. How I play earnings. We're starting earnings season. Check it out in the description. All right. So any questions about what I covered so far? Are there any questions? Do I, I'm not going to talk about this. Like I said, are there any questions about what I covered so far? So we play the tra I play the transitions. I play stage two and stage four, and I play a unique play based on gaps. Exhaustion. I play against the gap igniting I play with the gap okay I do this for day trading but I also do it in swing trading as well any other questions I mean any questions at all okay if not now my friends we can actually transition to to TC 2000 so let me get the room out of the way here and let me get stuff out of the way Actually, first, you want me to show you some of the charts that I talked about? Um, let me show you real quick. One second, okay? Oh, I took the camera down. I didn't mean to take the camera down. I was just going to show you this real quick. Uh, here we go. No. Nope. Yeah. Here we go. I think you should be able to see. Is that right? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So like transition A, recent chart, NLS. See it? How beautiful it is. Look at this. That's transition A. A and A B. Big gap down after a severe downtrend already. Long, right? And we just we trailed out at 15 something, 1560 or something, 1569 maybe. I think is where we trailed out. So right here, uh, when it broke down, when it broke this pivot, 1530 is where we trailed out. So right here. We had it from here as a long. So that's a big gap down. Uh, and here's the Fitch. We talked about the Fitch as a transition A. See the breakout? The transition. So that's transition A. And then another breakout just uh, yesterday, I think it broke out. Um, let's see. Any Anything else? And then here's the beyond, which was called the short in the room today. Right? Um, and then it crashed. This was a novice gap. Up, 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 up. And then gaps up another 10%. Who's chasing it? at this point after rallying 50% basically who the novice people so that's the last batch of buyers to get in it and and after that there's no more buying I don't mean there's never gonna be any buying I just mean temporarily that's basically all the buyers are, are already in so you look to short it at the top same with Tesla but it didn't drop that much it didn't drop that much it was a novice gap it was also just a 3% gap 3 to 4 at the most so beyond was like 10% and was vertical Right, this is not as vertical, but still was a novice gap. Should have been played short, not long, which is how I played it. 
Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go back and and now switch gears and look at the look at what we're gonna look at TC two thousand. All right. Uh, okay, one sec. Let me get this out of the way. All right. Are you guys able to see TC two thousand? Should be able to. This is just my annotation tool. It's not part of the program. All right, should be able to see TC2000. So in TC2000, reason why I like it, there's many reasons to like about to to like about it, but um, or many things to like about it. Um, one is you can go through the charts real fast, real quick. Look at this. I mean, as fast as you want. You can do. I can do three per second. Basically, is how I scan three per second. And then the other thing is, it's a dynamic scan. It's not like I'm stuck with the same watch list every single day. No, it picks up new, new items based on volume, based on your criteria. Whatever criteria you specify, it picks up new items, okay? So I have a simple criteria, price and volume. So my list stays, for the most part, the same, except for things that, like TRXC. This normally wouldn't make it to my list, but because of the volume today, it made it to my list. See that? So, but this is one of the one of the reasons is again speed. It allows me to go real quick. I mean, I don't know of any platform that can change charts without first downloading the data and pausing for a second. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, I'm sure the the, the thing is not catching up. The the broadcasting software can't keep up with this, right? But the other thing is, it's a dynamic list that and it scans based on the criteria that you specify. So here's how I set it up. You can just open TC2000. You'd have to set up the charts to make them look uh, good, the way you like your charts to be. So you have to go to right click, edit chart properties, and just go through the properties and set them up. Maybe you like uh, hollow charts, right? Uh, maybe you like, uh, I don't know if why you would do that, but maybe you like bar charts or whatever. So set them up how, how you like. Uh, add any indicators. I only have volume at the bottom and the, mo the two moving averages, the 200 period moving average and the 20 period moving average, both simple. And then I scan. And now I'm going to show you how to scan. So let me show you how to scan. You can do it through easy scan or you can do it through watch list. Uh, let's do it through watch list. So I click on watch list and then I go to US stocks. So again, click on watch list, click on US stocks, and then add the criteria now. So go to scan, click on scan, check that box, and then select conditions. Now, I don't want to, the reason why I select US common stocks, because I don't want to be looking at all these ADRs, American Depository Receipts that gap every day. They're not, they're ugly charts, so I don't like them like this one. Uh, well, I'll show you in a minute. So I, I select US common stocks, and then you know, name it whatever you want. The conditions, I don't care. Um, and then, um, let's say, you know, let's say we want to do it. Uh, this is a sample, whatever, meaning, or temporary. I, I want to delete it. This is just for you guys. And add condition. Very simple. Here's my conditions. You want to know what they are? Very simple. Volume. I type volume. It comes up. And then I go greater than and a daily chart, daily time frame whatever you want i do 500,000 one 500,000 per day click okay and then add con another condition i like to to add the price condition i don't want to scan all these penny stocks so i like to do minimum $1 okay and guess what scan and i'm done i'm done with the criteria i used to have two different tabs at the bottom I don't know if you can see them I think you can see them at the bottom where I would have look I just want to show you I'd add another condition look at this under 20 MA I think oh no yeah, how did I do it oh below 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 20 MA they don't have it as a condition anymore oh there it is price below but not 200 MA I want below 20 MA so let me just see take a look price and maybe I just click on, let me just below, oh, there it is, see it? So when I'm scanning, let's say I, I just want, I don't have time to scan for bullish and bearish, and I'm interested in only shorting anyway, I think the market topped, let's just say, let's just say I thought the market topped, and I want to scan for only stocks below the 20, bam, 
add it, and now you can. You, the, the software will only find stocks that are below their 20 MA. So what remains for you to do is to find stocks that have a playable pattern at or near a declining 20 MA, because sometimes the 20 MA is pointing up and the stock is below it, but it doesn't look good. So I would look for a stock that's in a downtrend under the 20 and you uh, and giving you a pattern like a sell setup or a breakdown right at the declining 20. Or let's say you think the market is going to, you know, is about to explode higher above, look at this, above 20 MA. You see this? And add it as a condition. So I used to do that to, to have one page for bearish items, one page for bullish items, and they would be completely different, like they would be completely different items, right? Uh, but right now, I, I, mean, I don't do that anymore. I just scan the entire list uh, above or below the 20. I mean, uh, so I don't care whether it's below or above the 20. Again, unless I'm really only, or I had, I have a lot of items already in my uh, spreadsheet, in my watch list, in my spreadsheet, um, in my Excel spreadsheet that are bullish and I just want bearish items, then yes, sure, I'll, I'll add that condition. I'll add that criteria. But generally speaking, those are my only two criteria. Volume above 500,000 a day and price above $1. That's it. Now for day trading, $500,000 uh, shares a day, that wouldn't be enough. I want over a million. But for swing trading, it's fine. I'm not looking to capture pennies. I'm not getting in and out. I'm getting in today, getting out five days, three days later. Does that make sense? So you don't have to worry so much about volume. In fact, I can personally, I can do with 300. I don't need to go to, to five. If I'm not finding anything, 500, I might go to 300,000 per day. But usually I find enough using scanning with 500,000 uh, sh shares per day. Let me read, catch up on the questions here real quick before I hit scan and show you what we end up with. So give me one second. I move the room out of the way a little bit here. Do you look at multiple time frames during the scan or first flag it and look later at multiple time frames? Excellent question. This is why I appreciate questions. This is why I want you to ask questions is because sometimes it doesn't even occur to me to tell you something. Yes, I actually only look at the daily chart uh, because that's the daily chart is the perfect time frame for swing trading, the weekly and the monthly for long term trading. OK, so I look at only the daily chart and and then I flag the items, which I'm going to show you how to do. Then I flag and then I copy the flagged items into my other platform. I don't like this TC2000 charts. I don't like their charts very much, personally. I don't like black backgrounds. I like white backgrounds. I mean, I'm old school, but to me, well, I closed out of the other platform, uh, Realtek. I would have showed you the white charts. Well, you've seen them. You see my charts all the time. I like white background. I like, you know, I don't like this chart. So what I do is I flag the items on the daily chart that have a pattern. One of the patterns that we talked about, either transition or a pullback or a breakout or a sell, sell setup or a breakdown. And then I look at it on my other platform on multiple time frames. The multiple time frames for swing trading are the daily for pattern. So the daily time frame to find you ha got to have a pattern on the daily, the hourly for for entry and the weekly and the monthly give you just a bigger uh, picture of what's happening. So you just want, don't want to be going going against them. So you don't want to be playing long a breakout on the daily chart if it's right at the declining 20 on the weekly, let's say, or the monthly, or if it's right into resistance on the larger time frame. So, so I copy the items that I will that I flag, and then I put them in that in my other platform, and then I look at them one more time. Okay. All right. Uh, let me just do this. Um, okay. Next. Can you look at the daily, the 60 minutes simultaneously? You can, but it slows me down considerably. So on here, I go three charts per second. So that's why I don't like to look at the daily and the 60 simultaneously. I look at the daily. And the reason why I also don't look at, like to look at the 60, because if the daily looks good, the 60 might not be ready. But I will, I, I'll still copy, I'll still flag that uh, chart. And and save it for later, save it in a spreadsheet basically for later. So that's why I don't care very much about the 60. The 60 just tells me whether the stock is ready to play tomorrow or not. But if it isn't, and I still like the daily, I want to copy that stock anyway. I want to I want to make sure I, I save that symbol, that stock to my spreadsheet. 
So I, I copy the flagged item and I, items and I save them in a spreadsheet. And I only scan TC2000 once a week. I don't do it every day. I don't have time to do it every day. I used to do it every day, and this is how I got good at reading charts. I didn't know it at the time, but that's the best training for your eyes. When you're actually just looking at price, you're looking at charts, you're not paying attention to all what they're all saying out there, all the uh, nonsense, subjective data, or tariffs, or the, the news about uh, the president, or this or that. The charts are the only truth, because they, they give you objective data. They tell you whether price is going up or down. They tell you the level of interest also, that's volume, right? And they tell you the manner in which they're going, how they're going, uh, up or down. The, and that's what the moving averages are for. So price, you know, you just look at price and that tells you all you need to know basically. When you start paying attention to other additional factors, you're just going to uh, distort your thinking. You're going to lose your objectivity. At least I do. I don't know about you, but I do. So I prefer to to filter all of to block all of that out and just focus on price okay any other questions we're good so let me show you i hit scan check it out and then over here you click on the this uh, whatever icon and you can you can uh, position it uh, to the left to the right to the bottom to the top and i just basically click on this and it basically uh, positions it or uh, locks it over here but it's already over here see it I just did this to show you how to do it, how I do it. So I don't really need this. I can close out of this because it's already right here to the left. And then I sort by volume because I want to look at the highest volume stocks first just in case, you know, I, we got 1,400 items to scan through. Just in case I don't, you know, I run out of time or I don't want to scan 1,400 items. I want to scan maybe, eight, let's just say, 1,000 or so. This way I will have covered the most liquid stocks first. And the least liquid, okay, well, I, I didn't scan them anyway. It's no problem. It's they're, they're the least liquid anyway. They're not very liquid. Does that make sense? Now, I do this only once a week on the weekend because I don't have that much time. But as I said, in the past, I used to do it every day after the close. I live in California. So at 1 o'clock in the past before I became director of education at T3 Live, um, I, I had all the time in the world. I mean, I, the day my day was just starting almost. So I had plenty of time, and without me being aware of it, I got really good at reading charts and really fast. can read the chart really quickly um, without me being aware of it S by simply scanning every day, looking at 2,000 charts a day, 2,000 charts a day, every day, okay? Uh, so, but now I do it on the weekend. If I see a pattern, if I see a nice looking, so here's the, here's the picture, don't forget. Am I drawing? Do you see it? Yeah, but let me let me use white. This is the picture we look for. This is it, folks. The the four stage cycle, transitions, the four transitions, uptrend, downtrend, and then the unique play based on gaps, and then the earnings play. But those I don't even use TC two thousand for that. I already have them from the daily gaps list, and I save my gaps list to a spreadsheet. So I don't even need TC2000 for that. So just the basic unit uh, strategies, the four transitions and the stage two uptrend. So I scan for buy setups, uh, uh, pullbacks and breakouts and for sell setups or counter, counter rallies and sell setups and breakdowns. That's it. OK, so now I go over it one by one and then you can click on the space bar or the down arrow and takes you to the next one. See this? That's a transition. A. This was but it triggered a few days ago. This is Wells Fargo. We traded it today in the room, Wells Fargo. I didn't keep it though until 49.60. It would have been very nice. Got out too soon. That's a transi transition C. I'm sorry, I think I said transition A. That's a transition C, short. See how the moving average, the 20 MA, went, was, it was below price and then started to curl and point down? That's, that's how you know the stock is about to transition lower. Likewise, you know that the stock is about to transition higher when it starts to curl, to flatten out and, cur and point up. See it? That's transition A. So you look to, to play it long. But sometimes you don't really get a good pattern. Like here, there was a breakout stop right here. But was it that good? I'm not so sure. So right here, long stop right here. And then short, this was also not so, so simple to do because it gapped down. So the best entry was right here. Stop right here. Got it? 
Now, usually I like to enter right at the right when it breaks, like right here, with a stop above the 20 MA, not below the 20 MA, usually. So this was good, but it's too late now. This was excellent as a transition A and a 1, 2, 3. And today was actually a novice gap, as I said, and it was a short. That's beyond. But now it's too far gone. I'm not going to flag it. Anything I like, I flag. So you hit the Shift and F uh, on your keyboard. So you hold down the Shift button, the Shift key, and then hit F. Notice how it flags it in the next to the symbol. Now it, it turns blue. And then at the end, I sort by f the flag, by the flagged items. And then I copy the list, and I drop it in my own uh, platform, the one that I like the charts uh, real tick, uh, where I like the charts more than TC2000, and I also have multiple time frames set up, the daily, the hourly, the weekly, and the monthly. Okay? So we scan here, looking for the, 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 the strategies what, that we talked about. This is setting up as a breakout. Guess what? GE setting up as a breakout. That's not bad. Let's flag it. So what, what, it, what needs to happen for us to play the GE? We just need the moving average to catch up a little bit, which means we just want GE to go sideways a couple more days, a few more days. And the moving average will catch up, and we can play a breakout on GE. See it? So I already flagged it. Next one. Forward. Notice forward. That's probably a weekly sell setup. We're looking at daily chart. Here's weekly. Let's take a look. No, it's not. Uh, I guess wrong. But you see the decline. Uh, 20 MA is starting to point down. But look at the weekly, actually. See how the weekly looks higher? I would never play that short. See it? There's conflict between the two time frames, so we'd never play it short. That's why it didn't follow through. It had a sell setup yesterday or so, yesterday, and failed. It's failing because the weekly looks higher. Look at the weekly. Transition A on the weekly. Sorry about that. The fire alarms are going off now. Uh, hopefully, I can carry through, but this is why I wanted to start the lesson early, but I can, I can hear the fire alarm, uh, alarms. Is it 5 o'clock? Yes, it is. They said they were going to start them at 5 o'clock. But I guess it's only in the hallways, so hopefully it won't be too much of a distraction. Apple. What kind of pattern do we have on Apple here? What kind of pattern do we have on Apple? You tell me. What kind of pattern do we have on Apple? Exactly. Climactic. Exactly. That's a setting up as a climactic short. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend anybody. I'm not saying Apple is going to crash. It may, if the market does. But from here to here, from t three, t let's say 312 to 270, if it triggers tomorrow under this bar's low, that's not, that wouldn't be a bad play, would it? And I love Apple. I have all kinds of products from Apple. But I'm just saying that's, that would be a climactic sell setup. Flag it. But Apple, I always keep it on my watch list. I'm aware of what Apple does because it impacts the whole market. Okay? Guys, I'm going to take the camera down. I'll be right back. Okay? Right back. I am back. I forgot to close the door to my office. So I just went and closed the door. All right. So that's a climactic sell setup. Um, that's extend. Look, the right entry, you might say, well, like my younger brother always asked me about AMD, right? Well, you know, should I g get AMD? If it's far from the 20, then don't get it. It's, it's too far away, too late. If it's at or near the moving average and you like the uptrend and it still looks good, then you can get it. See here, at or near the moving average. That's when you can get it. It dipped below it here, but still worked. But don't get it. Don't be looking to play it long up here. If anything, you can look to play it short. I don't recommend going against the trend unless the stock is really climactic. Got it? Like this was pretty good climactic, vertical almost. Here, that's not horrible. Short, stop, and target. The 20 MA will have will be up there by the time it pulls back. That's not bad, but you want to play that sparingly. You want to go against the trend very uh, sparingly because most of the time moves against the trend are short-lived you're just getting in it for a few days and getting out right here this was severe because it, it really did go climactic see it see how climactic it went uh, but most of the time moves against the trend are small and moves with the trend are big 
So you want to play with the trend, not against it. So most of the time, I don't flag these. Uh, this could you could say, well, what about the sell setup here, as a short? Pins is, is rallying up into the decline twenty. Yes, good location, but there is no good pattern yet. If it doesn't have a good pattern, I don't even bother. So it's a good spot on the daily chart, right at the decline twenty for a short. But it doesn't have a sell setup yet, meaning we don't we're not we don't have a doji bar and then below you know it's not it doesn't have a doji bar to, and, and a break below it. But not only that, you see this? That's a rounding bottom. Or in other words, there was a breakdown failure right here. So I don't short something that's coming from a breakdown failure. See it? So that's why I wouldn't play the pins short, even though it's at a good spot. So there's more to it than what I'm going over here in terms of what to look for. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm still on the weekly chart, by the way. Here's the, the daily time frame. Notice pins was a transition, A on the daily chart. Wow, I, I was stuck on the weekly. That's weak. Apple on the weekly looks more climactic than the daily. And let's take a look at the monthly. Monthly is not very climactic. But I was actually, I forgot to switch back to the, to the daily. See these up, up top here, daily, weekly. You can also use the keyboard as a shortcut. I mean, so if you press 5, it takes you to the weekly. If you press 9, it takes you to the monthly. If you press 9 on your keyboard. If, if you press 1, it takes you to the daily. If you type uh, control 60 or control what? Control H, hourly, I think. It has all the shortcuts right here. Control 6 for hourly. So so sometimes I, I go to the weekly and I forget. The, so I, I forgot to, to, do, to look at the, to switch back to the daily, which is my primary time frame for finding swing plays. Notice th when you see, again, when you see a downtrend and the stock starts to curl and the movie average starts to curl like this, that's how you know it's about to, ready to go higher. See the pins? See the moving average? I'm not coming up with this. It's right there in front of you. And likewise right here, SDC, downtrend, and then finally the curl. I, like, I call it the cradle. It's like, you know, when a mother is holding the baby, they usually, us guys, I have a, a newborn, and not a newborn, nephew. Uh, and I, you know, I wanted to carry him, I put him on my neck. Or I lifted him abo above my head. Babies don't even like that. They like to be cradled. They like to be held like this. And you see mothers all the time holding them like this. So I like, th that's like the cradle, the baby <laughs> uh, trade right here. The halt, whatever you want to call it. The, the curl, the transition, whatever you want to call it. Um, this was a big gap that got sold today, as most big gaps do on, on these garbage stocks, these stocks that are going to zero, basically, almost. But there's no setup. As a, as a swing trade, there's no setup on it. Um, this is going climb. Oh, that's Tesla. Oh, that's Tesla. It's going a little climactic, for sure. Uh, it would have been better, far better, if we had another day like this, like we did yesterday, another big day here t today instead of a doji bar. But guess what? Tesla, tomorrow, you can play short. Okay, if you're not in it already from today's trade, which we called in the room this morning as a short, and if you didn't keep it and you want to play it tomorrow, you can play it tomorrow, short. Now, I'm not saying it's never going to fail. I'm not saying, oh yeah, if you play it short, it's definitely going to work. No, it could fail, but I'm saying it's probably worth a shot if it breaks under that doji bars low, okay? Big gap down on the BSX, no play there. Guess what? MU is setting up as, as what? What kind of pattern is it setting up? What kind of pattern do we have here that's setting up? Anybody looking at the room? No, no, not a buy setup. Where's the pullback? A base, a base breakout. That's right, exactly right. So what does it need? Just you know, when the stock is ready to break out, the base gets tight. See how this is not a very tight base. So you start to see smaller and smaller bars usually but the other thing it needs is the moving average, so a couple more days here, and then you can play it long already. Over the highs, stop below the lows. Got it? So that, that should be flagged. Sh shift and F, and notice it flagged it. Okay? And then the next one, this is too sloppy, way too sloppy. Wouldn't play it as a breakout when it's this sloppy. Notice again, Uber, downtrend, and then the baby, right? So that, that, that's, that's what's going on here. That's what happened there. It, it's gone. Notice again, SNAP. Um, I don't know what to do with this. PCG, it's actually, I think, a weekly buy setup. Check it out. But it triggered already. See it? It's a weekly pullback, minor weekly pullback. PCG. Probably goes to the 200 MA. Probably, but 
we yeah, it had news on it yesterday and that's how it triggered so I missed it even though I've been watching it probably goes up to here at least uh, this is a transition C but for transition C you want to check the weekly and when I do this when I do my scanning on TC2000 I don't check the weekly and the hourly and I I just I just flag it and I move on and when I look at it on multiple time frames that's when I check the weekly but let's check the weekly it's probably gonna see at the rising 20 I was gonna say it is probably gonna be at the rising 20 why because oh, how did I know how did I know because when it doesn't have a momentum move up see this that's not a continuous here's a momentum move up see it M just BAM big move up Apple so when it's that when it's like this when it's a momentum move up non-stop 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 it means it gets extended on the on the weekly far above the 20 on the weekly right so my friends if the stock on the daily moves slowly it's not gonna be it's not what which one T AT and T it's not gonna ever be that extended on the weekly and you don't want to do a transition C short unless it's extended on the weekly so we, we look at the weekly and the 20 is right here again why because on the way up it was a slow steady grind up so it never got really extended so transition C for transition C plays you want stocks to be extended on the weekly likewise for transition A on the daily chart when you're playing long you want them to be far below the 20 okay anyways so that's that's what I look for CGC was a good play a couple yesterday was not bad as a breakout transition a take a look 20 MA price below the 20 MA short every time it go, goes up to the 20 almost short 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 uh, short I don't know where else short uh, and sometimes let's say let's say you short it here okay maybe it didn't work doesn't always work but you want to be shorting at the declining 20 and you want to be buying it when it starts to tr starts to transition up so buy right does that make sense of course you have to have them on your watch list otherwise you're not going to be aware of it so you have to scan it's nice to be able to scan on a daily basis after the close if you don't have any you know if you have time if you can make the time for it it's really nice but if you don't have the time for it then you know do it on the weekend at least once a week at least uh, now so we talked about this I don't want to keep going because uh, we can literally spend two three hours just looking at this we I can literally spend two three hours looking at this uh, notice this was a uh, it's transition a but it's already moving and the moving average wasn't pointing up so it wasn't very good that's crone cannabis looks higher uh, serious satellite I, I never take it seriously because it just doesn't move very much uh, F cell I don't know what to do with it broke uh, PFE was kind of a pullback but also a breakout so late this might be a sell setup on the weekly let's take a look no it's not the weekly is pointing up um, so I just keep going keep going until I find something that I like breakout on Cisco but I don't like it very much because we have resistance I usually don't play breakouts that are under the 200 MA Ch let's check the weekly see if it's good actually the weekly is good on Cisco as long as a breakout but again, and I also stay away from the name brands for the most part, like the, you know, Cisco is a name brand, uh, not going to explode, usually it doesn't. Uh, this is a buy setup on Intel right at the rising 20, not bad, but it's a market stock. And if you don't like the market, then, you know, you don't want to play Intel if it's a market stock. And then I just, I can go real fast because I'm focused only on here. When I'm scanning, I'm only focusing on here. I'm not looking at all this garbage. I'm just focusing on the right side of the chart if there's nothing here if there's no pattern there then I don't look farther to the left got it people can't scan fast because they're looking at the entire chart they start here maybe the middle of the page the middle of the chart and they say oh yeah downtrend downtrend and by the time they catch up to where the stock is at it's already they've already spent a minute or two so I, I just look at the far the, the right hard cold edge of the chart and if there's no pattern there then I just keep going doesn't matter that it was beautiful here that was in the past it's gone I'm only you know you, ch you you're only looking for where this you're only looking for stocks interested in stocks that are about to go somewhere not where they've been right uh, look at this CZR beautiful but I think isn't it a buyout CZR uh, I mean it's been in a powerful uptrend Thought it was a buyout uh, this is below the 20 so even though it's a rising 20 it wouldn't play it long uh, I don't know about this it's transition C on the hell but it's very sloppy so you play it short right here stop right here let's check on the weekly on this 
the weekly has room. See how it's above the 20, so you could do it from here to here, short. But it's pretty sloppy. It's not a very tight space. HAL. Okay. And that's how I scan. And uh, and then what I wanted to see, look at this GME, really bearish gap down. When a stock doesn't move on the day of the gap, this didn't move on the day of the gap today. You can play it short the next day if it doesn't move right here short. I played the S SLDB same way. It didn't move on the day of the gap. The next day I shorted it this day and then I covered the day after just two days. Um, but it looks good actually for a sell setup if it can you know give us a sell setup here short it looks beautiful SLDB as a short uh, so w I, I I forgot this the chart we were looking at then uh, Hal we were at on Hal so you know you keep uh, scanning w what I was gonna say was oh and if I'm going I'm looking for long term plays um oh I was or we were on GME actually we said tomorrow we can look at it as a short but what I was gonna say is if I'm looking for um, long-term trades, weekly and uh, and monthly are my time frames. So at the end of the week, if you're if you trade like let's say your 401k or your IRA or you you know you manage money or you look for long-term plays, not swing not for a few days but for a few weeks at a time, switch to the weekly time frame. That should be your time frame. If you look to take uh, trades that you want to be in for the next several months, maybe even a couple of years, look at the monthly. It smooths out the trend and gives you long-term trades. Of course, stops on the monthly and the weekly are going to be very large. But you, you're also looking to for a large move. You're not looking to get in today and get out tomorrow. So you can actually scan the monthly and the weekly time frames. And you're supposed to scan at the end of the month, at the end, at the end of every month, at the end of every week, if you're a core long-term trader. If you're a swing trader, you're supposed to scan at the end of every day. But like I said, these flagged items, I actually save them in a spreadsheet and I scan the flagged items every day after the close. But I don't scan my entire stock universe on TC2000 every single day because I just simply don't have that kind of time. Um, but as a swing trader, you scan av after the close every day. As a, as a, as a long-term weekly or a monthly trader, you scan at the end of the week, at the end of the month. Got it? So if you trade off the monthly chart, you only need to scan 12 times a year. That's it. 12 times a year. Okay. All right. Any other questions? So just wanted to kind of give you an overview of how I do it. And as I said, I go three charts per second when this is becoming a little climber right here. Oxy for a short. It's not very good because it's based. See the base here? If it didn't have the base, it'd be wonderful. But it might top out soon. Oxy. Uh, so anything I see that I like, I flag. But I go three charts per second, basically. And this way, this might be a weekly buy setup. See the pullback on the daily? It's very deep, so it might be, it might have broken the 20. Ah, uh, check it out. Check it out. CTL. Isn't that a beautiful weekly buy setup? It is, but it's very deep. It shouldn't have broken the 20 if it was really that good. But it's just a clean buy setup. How did I spot it without looking at the weekly chart? Because on the daily, I can already picture what the weekly looks like. Uptrend and pulls back. Deep pullback. That means goes in a downtrend a little bit. That means it's a weekly buy. Uh, the weekly is probably setting up as a long. See it? CTL. Beautiful. But just a little deep. That's the only issue with it. And so, as I was saying, you know, I go real fast and I don't stop unless I see something that I like, then I flag it. This, for example, would be a good short right here, but it's a big stop and you have support to the left. So it doesn't, it's not going to give you enough reward to risk. So I, I don't like it. Uh, Macy's was a transition, but it was too sloppy. Uh, a friend of mine reached out to me about it a couple times, and I just said, I see it, it's a transition, A, but I don't know how to play it. It's too sloppy. Uh, this might be a sell setup, but short right here under the, the screen bar is low, uh, which means it's going to have to drop at least 3 4% before it's ready. It's probably a weekly sell setup. No, it's not a good weekly chart. All right. So, you know, there, there we go. That's the transition C on the weekly. Uh, under the base, stop above it. It's like, this is another bank, key. It's like Wells Fargo, but Wells Fargo was much prettier. Oops, WFC. See it? Much prettier, but it's the same picture. So key is a bank, same picture. Okay. Uh, let's see, I'm just looking for comments. This was a mega gap today. This is a transition A, WNB, transition A breakout, but still doesn't have enough reward to risk because it's, it's not a thin base, it's a thick base. It's a wide base, so long right here, stop right here, big stop, target right here. 
That's only one to one reward to risk. It's all about uh, reward to risk and your batting average. So the, the lower your batting average or your hit rate, the higher your reward to risk has to be. This has been in a beautiful uptrend. You can play it long right here. Right here, stop right here. Okay, as a long and just off the 20. Now, what is it that I don't like about it? The gap failed. Bullish stocks that gap don't, uh, bullish gaps don't fail. So this gapped up and failed for some reason. I don't know what the volume here means today. Maybe it's a buyout or something. I don't know. Uh, this is too sloppy, but as a short, but it's too sloppy. Uh, Twitter uh, had a nice buy setup right here, but it doesn't look, it probably doesn't look good on the weekly. See the weekly? How did I know? How did I know? I'm just looking at the chart just like you. How did I know? Because I can see it's in a long-term downtrend and it's been bounce, ra rallying, so it must be at the weekly, close to the weekly declining 20. So that's why I wouldn't play Twitter long. Okay. All right. Nice transition. Oh, my God. VG. It's on my daily watch list. Uh, I don't have my daily watches here, but it's on my daily watches. Check it out. It's in the, if you're in the strategic swing trader, it was on our ideas section. It was in the daily watch list yesterday and the day before, but I didn't do it because I said it didn't have enough reward to risk. I went over it yesterday in the coaching session. Remember VG? I just went over it yesterday as a long because I said, well, that's the target. And so I liked it, but I just didn't think it had enough reward to risk one to one. But look at this today. It went through the target. This is why beautiful stocks, beautiful patterns, even if they don't have enough reward to risk, you can play them most of the time because they will exceed your targets. They will surprise you in ways you couldn't imagine sometimes. Okay, but uh, you know, the accountant in me said, no, this doesn't have enough reward to risk. I didn't play it. Look at the move today. Beautiful. Uh, when a stock, this was the best novice gap this and beyond. Today is beyond, but this was probably the best novice gap I have seen in the last 12 months. All year, I was going to say, but the year is only 15, uh, two weeks. We're two weeks into the year. I mean, all of all year since the start of 2019. Best novice gap right here. Look at this. It From 7 to 24, it tripled, more than tripled in a few days. And then on top of that, printed that wide range bar huge volume bar and then gapped up a huge amount. That's the best. It's a short and then bam. So this is what the beyond is, but this is even better. That's what the beyond was today. Up and then a gap up and that's novice. RAD was even better. But RAD, I wasn't around when it happened. I was, I was on vacation. RAD, I took some time off around the end of the year. See, this was on December 27th. I was actually off. I wasn't trading. So this would have been a tier one novice gap up short. And notice the collapse from 24. Where is it at now? $12, $12.28, 50% loss. In a, well, it actually did it in a few days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. And you're already at target. Of course, it's below it now, but there's no recovery from a, from a gap like this almost. Uh, okay. Anyways. All right. I trust that was, this is, might be a weekly sell setup. See it? It's a weekly sell setup. Here it is. I could tell based on the daily. But it rallied hard, and so the weekly is 20 MA is flat, not declining. So, you know, not great, but it's a weekly sell setup. All right, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. It was uh, on, on swing trading, how to scan using TC2000. But as I said, this lesson is applicable to everything to any platform that you want to use. I use TC2000 because it's really easy to use. This is a breakout but extended on Zynga. But I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and uh, and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me via email or reach out to customer service. If you're not a member in the room and you want to reach out to customer service info at t3live.com they can forward your email to me. Um, okay but uh, also if you're if you're uh, if you're not familiar with my work, with what I do, you want to learn more, check out the links in the description. If you want to trade earnings with me, most lucrative strategy in during earnings season, there are limited spots left. They really, I'm dead serious. There are limited spots left uh, for the earnings engine program. So feel free to check out the links in the description. I'm just scanning as I'm speaking here. Look at this stock. It's going to space SPCE on fire. 
but uh, today was a novice gap. Small gap, but novice. BLDP is, is up there, could be a short. This could be a short also, but notice it's rallying above the gap, the gap down, so it's rallying into the gap fill. So when a stock rallies into the gap fill, usually that's too bullish. And now, now the 20, because it's rallied so much, is going to go flat rather than down. So a triple BY I don't think is going to be a short. This could be a short HPE, but uh, it's also, you know, where's the target on this? So you short it right here, that's the target. Are you looking to make just a little bit like this, 25 cents? With a with a 25 cent stop, I'm not. So I'm gonna move on. I'm not. I wouldn't do it. But notice the weakness compared to the market. Notice how it's basing bearishly under the declining 20. But again, I'm not uh, interested. This is Ericsson. It's an ADR. I you know it shouldn't have gotten picked up by the scan uh, because it's an ADR uh, because it gaps every day. See how I know it's an ADR. It, ga it all gaps most days. It uh, looks lower here. It looks okay, but it's just so sloppy. So I'm gonna pass personally. Uh, I don't like. I don't trade ADRs. They trade uh, in a foreign market primarily, um, and then and they and then they just open here where they close overseas. Uh, Netflix is higher, but it doesn't look that good. Uh, this is a transition A. I was actually gonna play it today, but it didn't trigger. I was gonna play it if it had triggered over. I'll just show you. Well, it, you know, just hide that bar. Ignore this bar today. So if it took out the highs here, I was going to play it right here. Stop right here. I was. I was going to play it, but it didn't trigger. So now I'm going to cancel it. Okay. Anyways, this might be weekly buy setup. See? It's a weekly buy setup. Without looking at the weekly chart, I could tell. Weekly buy setup. But it's not ready on the daily chart. So now you can watch it over the coming weeks to see once the moving average on the daily starts to point up, you can play that weekly buy setup. Okay? All right. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and step off the mic. This was kind of a long lesson, but I hope you enjoyed it. And again, uh, I trust that you'll give me a thumbs up if you like the video and if you enjoyed today's lesson. And if not, give me a thumbs down. Feel free, whatever you want. Uh, but um, I, I hope I'm uh, providing value here and helping you out uh, here we go and uh, as i said if i am then feel free to hit the like button also feel free to check out the links in the description below thank you so much everybody and have a good night take care